Welcome to the next Moto Champion Talk Show brought to you by Bridgestone. If you missed last week's 4th of July special with Vet Motorsports CEO Pete Klein and latest motors Castrol Triumph's Bobby Fong, you can go back and watch it again at nextmotochampion.com. In new news, in British Superbike, James the Rocket Raspoli had another successful weekend in the fifth round of the British Supersport Championship. After barely avoiding a crash in the first race on Saturday, James was able to finish in fifth and in sixth on Sunday. And after just two race weekends, he was able to go from 14th place in the series to tie for sixth place in the overall championship, just a few points outside of fifth. We look to have James on the show later this month. Moto America is off for a few weeks while awaiting Mazda Raceway Laguna Seca taking place July 17th through 19th. So what do you plan to do with all your free time in between races? Why not go to a track day? N2 Track Days and SCT are great organizations with plenty of events left on the schedule. And with just a few quick modifications to your street bike, you can easily take it to the track from the street and enjoy a full weekend full of legal speeding. And on that note, let's go to Trevor Sadler as he talks us through the difference between novice, intermediate, and advanced level groups at a track day in this week's Track Tips with Sport Bike Track Time. Hey everyone, this is Trevor from Sport Bike Track Time. We are trackside here at the beautiful Barber Motorsports Park. Want to talk a little bit about going to the track, doing a track day, and the different levels at a track day. Most track day organi organizers are going to have novice, intermediate, and advanced. And what does that mean? Maybe you're an experienced street rider, you've been riding for years and years, and you want to go and do your first track day, and you think, well, of course, I'm an advanced rider. Why wouldn't I be? Well, it doesn't quite, quite work like that. Riding on the street, riding on the track, two really completely different things. So what do we talk about when we talk about novice, intermediate, and advanced? Well, everyone at their first track day really should start out as a novice rider. There is so much to learn at a track day. You get with the instructors, there's so much technique to learn. So even if you are a seasoned street rider, when you come to the track, you really want to start out as a novice rider and really, as a novice rider, you could be someone that's only been riding a motorcycle for a month and you come and you do your first track day. Or you may have been riding for years and years and you've ridden through the mountains and you're a pretty seasoned rider. Those can both be novice riders at a track day. You come, you bring your street bike, you tape up the lights, do all the simple tech procedures for novice, and then you get out there and the instructors are going to show you so much in terms of the line around the track, body positioning on the motorcycle, everything. Once you get comfortable on the track, now you can progress to intermediate. And what is intermediate all about? Well, there's a little bit less active instruction for intermediate, although if you want to go find an instructor for some one-on-one -on -one instruction, you certainly can. Now you're simply taking what you've learned in novice, taking it one more step, working on smooth, safety, everything else, so that you can be a smooth, safe, and fast rider because the speed comes with being smooth and safe. Once you work in intermediate for a while and you get a really solid line down, your corner entry is really consistent, you carry good corner speed through the turns, you're a smooth, predictable rider, now you're ready for advance. Now you're gonna be riding with some current racers, former racers, it's gonna be moving fast out there. But the thing is, is everyone's gonna have that experience to keep them smooth and predictable. And that's what keeps you safe when you're moving around at an advanced pace. So that's a little bit of a description about the different levels at a track day, novice, intermediate, and advanced. Hope to see you out at the track soon. And now that you're all up to speed, let's take a quick minute to thank our sponsors. For the Motorcycle Technology Center, visit bikers-lab.com. For championship-winning performance, choose Brembo. That's a Bridgestone Ecopia. I've never seen them out in the wild like this. It's young, too. They're very young. We're here studying the behavior of Bridgestone's fuel-efficient Ecopia tires in their natural setting. They can help you save up to $450 in gas over their lifetime. What? Holy smokes, that's a great deal. <sighs> great. You scared it away. Oh. Start going green and saving some green. 
Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Hello. This little beauty here is top of the line. So you just pull like this to go left, and like so to go right. Where are the brakes? I just grab a hold of both and pull straight back. And the whoa is optional. You wouldn't buy a motorcycle without handlebars. No, thanks. And you shouldn't ride a motorcycle without GEICO insurance. Roadside assistance, 24-hour service, great rates. GEICO Motorcycle. See how much you could save. RST Racing Leathers, Gloves, and Boots, available at ridersdiscount.com. For the most comfortable ride on two wheels, choose Saddleman. On tonight's show, we have former World Superbike and British Superbike rider and now Riders Alley Racing Yamaha Superstock 1000 racer number 191, Mark Heckles. And after an incredible race over the weekend at DeCoin and his history-making win at the X Games, it's AMA Pro Flat Track's Brian Smith. But first, let's go to John Boucher for this week's Product Spotlight. If you've ever had issues with corrosion, erosion, overheating, or busted hoses from too much pressure, then you're gonna wanna pay attention to this week's product spotlight. Water is cheap and readily available, but it's also the root and cause of all corrosion within engine cooling systems. Water, when heated, dries off a significant portion of dissolved oxygen, but as it cools, reabsorbs fresh oxygen. This cycle leads to perpetual cycle corrosion. No water, no corrosion. Hot spots within the engine cooling system cause localized boiling. The steam generating significantly increases the pressure within the system, putting stress on hoses and other components. Evans waterless coolant has a boiling point that's above 375 degrees Fahrenheit, and it won't vaporize within the cooling system. Cooling system pressure is greatly reduced, and since the operating temperature of an engine is well below 375 degrees, you won't have to worry about your engine overheating either. There are three easy steps to extending the life of your engine by installing Evans coolant. Step one, properly drain your cooling system. Step two, use this prep fluid flush which you can pick up for around $33 to remove the residual water remaining in the coolant system. Step three, add your half gallon coolant. A half gallon like this is gonna run you about $29. Now you're protected from corrosion, erosion, boiling high pressure, and overheating. It's just that easy, and that's this week's Product Spotlight. American Cargo, the next level in performance riding packs. Evil Technology, 100% American made precision parts and accessories at eviltechnology.com. Woodcraft Technologies, making products for racers by racers at woodcraft cfm.com. <laughs> And we're back and we're here with the former World Superbike regular. He's made his way over the pond to race here in the Moto America Series, the Superstock 1000 class, and he's doing pretty darn good. It's the number 191, Mark Heckles. Mark, welcome to, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Danielle. Absolutely. So let's talk about it. You've made your way overseas. You've planted yourself in New York City uh, and you're doing well in the Moto America Superstock 1000 class right now. I mean, how would you say things are going for you? Um, things have been going really, really well, yeah. We are... Uh... We haven't quite had a win yet, but um, we've been on the podium of VIR in second and third and uh, constantly in the in the top five and find ourselves third in the championship. So uh, I think everyone's a little surprised at, at how well we've actually done with such a small team. So, yeah, really enjoying it. Now, who's surprised? The fans or your team or you? Who's surprised? <laughs> I, think this, I think yourself more than anyone else, yeah. Um, it's been a big effort from... From me and, um, and and the guy that, that really put it all together, and uh, uh, the guys back at the, at the shop in in New York. So um, it's been it's been a great year. Yeah, it's been uh, it's been nice to be racing back at this level. Right. So we're going to talk about a few things here. First of all, you are sitting in third right now. A lot of these tracks, or all of the tracks, actually, are brand new to you. I mean, how are you adjusting so quickly? Is it just your level of experience, or are you just liking the tracks? <clears throat> um, a bit of both, I think. Um, the the only track we've been to is VIR, which was uh, our, our best weekend so far. But um, I've always been able to pretty much uh, learn tracks 
you know, within the first day on the Friday, you get two hours on the Friday. So um, I think at this level, you need to be able to adapt to all kinds of different tracks. Some have been more difficult than others um, and some have been more enjoyable than others. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's all, most of them have all been new except for VIR so far. I'm looking forward to going back to Laguna. It's been a while since I was there, but I don't think it's changed since 2002. So I'm looking forward to that. Now, you say you've raced in most conditions and you're pretty uh, well adjusted to most conditions, but you Barber, when I talked to you at Barber, it was really hot and, and pretty much unbearable, if you ask me. I mean, how are you adjusting to things like that? Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was a steamy weekend. Um, but, um, yeah, I mean, you just got to get on with it. You know, my, my father always used to say it's the same for every, everybody else. So you, uh, you make sure you're hydrated and... Um, yeah, I don't really notice it so much when you're on the bike. It's more when you stop and uh, getting on and off the bike, I suppose. But um, yeah, that was that was particularly difficult. But no, no worse than um, the Miller a few weeks later. It was uh, it was it was a hundred degrees most of the weekend. But um, yeah, we just cope with it. You know, you make sure you drink a lot of water and uh, and get on with it. You know. Well, your dad, a former racer himself. So let's talk about your experience and your background, Mark. You've been around for, for quite a while, racing most of your life, and you've been just about everywhere. Uh, you've moved yourself from England over to New York. You've also lived in Italy, and you've raced just about every type of motorcycle or tested, for that matter. So give us a brief synopsis of, of your background in racing. Um, I grew up with uh, my father, raced for years, Danielle, so... Uh, like many guys in the paddock, uh, grew up around <clears throat> around bikes and I think I had a motorcycle when I was uh, four years old and um, I've just always been around it and made, uh, we raced mini motos or mini bikes uh, for years in the UK. Uh, we actually raced them at uh, Chaz, David's, Chaz Davis's mum and dad's go-kart track in, uh, in Kinsham in Wales. So I've known Chaz since he was a young, young boy, and um, it just progressed from there. We started uh, racing, I raced 125 Kajibas with James Tosland when I was 17, I think, um, and just progressed into the British Championship. It was uh, it was always a good, strong championship and um, always had, you know, a decent bike and always uh, found my way onto the grid by, uh, by begging people to part with some cash. So <clears throat> I progressed to... Um, to get noticed enough, uh, and then Oscar Rumi asked me to, uh, in 2001, asked me to do a European Superstock Championship on a Honda, and um, finished third in that championship. James Ellison went on to win it. Um, it was a great year. It was nine races. I think I was on the podium for four of them, and did a great job with the Honda. Everyone had a Suzuki, so we got uh, we got some money from Honda to do a World Championship with Oscar. And all the guys uh, involved in, w with Rumi, and um, that's what we did in 2002. It was it was a bit more difficult than what it what I'd hoped it would be, but we still managed to do I think all 12 or 13 rounds, and had a fantastic year, big learning year, and um, yeah, it was good. And then back to the British Championships, and and in 2006 or seven, we moved to New York, and uh, really. Kind of hung up, hung the leathers up, or hung hung the hung the helmet up, and uh, got a, a real job and put some money in the bank instead of spending it on tires, and um, left it alone for a few years until I uh, I bought it. I bought a CBR 1000 and did a couple of track days at New Jersey Motorsport Park, and uh, I've been back doing it again since now for probably three or four years back in the states. So enjoying it, yeah, it's great. Well, it's great to have you back. You said you're over the moon to be back racing. Now, you've raced against guys like Bayless and Colin Edwards, and you even purchased a bike from Vermeulen. So you've got all these names uh, in your book of history, which has led you to now. Uh, and you're doing so well. You're sitting third uh, in the Moto America Superstock 1000 class. I mean, do you have any idea that the competition would be as stiff as it was here um, once you got out on the track? I mean, did you imagine it would be that competitive? Yeah. Yeah, I kind of knew the best guys in America would be uh, would be on the grid, and uh, that's definitely been the way. There's uh, some real young, uh, fast uh, guys in in our class and, and many others in Moto America that um, deserve to be there. You know, so it's nice just to be able to mix it with them for uh, for as long as I can um, at my sprightly age. You know, I'd, I'd love to be 23 again and doing it, but um, I think experience this year. I've finished every race and. Um, 
proud of that. And like I say, uh, a couple of podiums at VIR. So, um, yeah, it's been uh, it's been a good year for us. But yeah, there's definitely uh, there's definitely some talent on the grid, and and also they've got very good teams as well, Daniel. So that makes a big difference. We're a small team, you know. With like like I talk, said at um, Barbara, I think we're the only teams that come out of New York, um, which makes it makes it logistically kind of difficult as well. So. Um, well, let's, yeah, was, let's talk about your team, uh, the Riders Alley, the Riders Alley team, and how you got partnered up with them. It's a it's a garage based out of Manhattan. Uh, just some bike enthusiasts that wanted to get on board, or how did you how did you put that together? Um, it was the uh, the CEO, the guy that owns Damien Newfeld. He owns uh, two purpose built motorcycle parking garages in Manhattan, one on uh, one in Midtown and one down in Wall Street. Um, just became good friends with him with racing and CCS. Uh, we needed somewhere to keep the bikes and uh, and they have the facilities to, to work on the bikes and have a bench and everything. And uh, just a real great group of guys that love racing, love track days um, and girls uh, that um, they were passionate and uh, enthusiastic about me going racing at Moto America. So uh, there was a bunch of us, a bunch of guys and girls helped me uh, get the riders alley racing off the ground over the winter and uh yeah it went from there really so they've opened they opened a damien damien opened a third place in williamsburg in brooklyn which is partly the reason i moved to brooklyn to be closer to the garage um so i could work on the bikes um yeah that's that's where it's where it's all come from the, i mean the brainchild behind it is a good friend called adrian adrian avia he um i raced with him last year in ccs and um when he saw the rule changes, when Wayne Rainey and the Craig Group and uh, changed the Superstock rule, um, he poached the idea of buying two new R1s and uh, and actually competing back at Moto America. So I was obviously a little bit blown away that he would first of all choose me, and second of all he was willing to spend that kind of cash. So um, it's been a great, yeah, it's been great, real, real good camaraderie with the guys in the garage and. Uh, yeah, looking forward to the rest of the year. Now, what are the plans moving forward? Is this something that you see being long-term with this group uh, over at Riders Alley, or is this something more short, short-term, they just want to get their feet wet and see how it would go? Don't know. Maybe ask them that. I'd like to think that we could do it again next year, but, you know, it gets expensive. We've obviously been doing okay finishing every race and um, getting some money back from Moto America. That helps with the tires. But, um, yeah, um, we'll have to wait and see. Well, we know you're not new to racing, Mark, but you are new to Moto America and to the States uh, in our paddock. We just wanted to get you on, introduce you to our audience, and say congratulations for doing so well so far this season. He's sitting third in points right now after having a couple great weekends, including getting on the box a few times. Uh, Mark, anything, anybody else you'd like to thank before we let you go? Uh, there's a bunch of people I'd like to thank, but uh, I think we were so competitive and so well prepared early on. Uh, it was a big... Uh, big shout out and big thanks to Chuck Giacchetto at Yamalu Westby Racing he, he pretty much put me in touch, in touch with everybody I needed to speak to to, uh, to help prepare the bikes and uh, Yamaha were, were great with me and, uh, and Adrian and um, a lot of people I need to thank Danielle but um, yeah looking forward to the rest of the year Right. Well, we're looking forward to having you here. It's great to have a new a new name and a new face in the paddock. Mark Heckles, everybody, number 191. He is at Scouse Mouse on social <laughs> media. Is that right? Where did that That's come right. from? Chris from Dripping Wet told me to ask you. It's a long story. People from Liverpool are called Scousers, so. Okay, and the rest is history. There you go. Scouse Mouse. It's number 191. Mark Heckles, everybody. We'll be right back after this commercial break.
for safe and structured track days, it's Into Track Days. Check out their schedule at in2td.org. TT Moto Gear, your source for premium products and service. With more motorcyclists on the road this time of year, it's important that you remember your gear. John's gonna show you a few quick items that'll help keep you safe on your next ride. And as Danielle said, I mean, there are a lot of bikes. This is summertime, it is peak, peak riding time. And there's just a couple things, reminders really, that I wanna throw out there. We have a ton of products in our warehouse and I went back and I grabbed a few because there are some mistakes that I see being made out there right now with as much riding as there is. You know, the very first thing that I look at when I talk about safety, and especially on, on your motorcycle's front brakes, is the pads. You know, if you can't remember the last time that you put new pads in, then it's probably time for pads. You know, brakes are the type of thing where you forget that you need them until it's too late. So if you're looking for safety to improve the safety, definitely wanna go out and replace those front pads. Another thing is I see a lot of guys riding around without gloves on. Man, if you like your fingers and your toes when it comes to the boots, then you're gonna wanna pick up a pair of these uh, racer gloves. This is a full protected glove. It has uh, protection on the wrist and knuckles and fingertips. This is actually the R Safe model. If you like this look, um, it has a double Velcro and it has the hard plastic sliders on the palm. But it's a, it's a great glove. This is the, the racer R glove. And then the boots that I like the best that are the most comfortable to me right now are these RST boots. So um, these come in black and white. But again, I see a lot of guys out there, tennis shoes, Sandals, if you don't want, if you don't like your toes, wear sandals on a motorcycle, all right? But if you do like your toes, then you're gonna probably wanna look at a pair of these RST boots. Another thing that happens, you know, when it's already too late is you bust a chain. Now, a great way to keep up with your chain is to have a chain cleaning brush and some, and some lube. So when just by cleaning it, you're gonna know whether or not that chain is in good shape and it's gonna remind you. So have that laying around, you see it, and you'll go, oh, I need to check and, and clean my chain. That's how you'll spot weak links in it or if it's time to get a new one. If it is, you can pick up one of these Sunstars um, with no problem. In fact, this all this little kit right here, you can get at motosport.com. So um, these, the last but not least, the one piece of equipment that I see people missing that I think that they would want more than anything else, if they did happen to go down, it's gonna be riding pants. These are the Bullet Kovec riding pants and these actually have a better slide rating than leather. Uh, they're, they're not only comfortable, this is actually my own pair, they're not only comfortable, uh, but they don't look bad. You know, they don't look like a big pair of baggy riding pants, they just look like jeans, and you end up wearing a whole day and forget that you have riding pants on, but the protection's there. And guys, if you want your girl to go with you, then you probably need to get her a pair as well. So again, fashionable, uh, they look good, feel good, uh, the bullet riding jeans. Um, and that's just a couple kind of safety reminders for this peak time of year riding out there this summer. Stay safe, guys. Sunstar, the largest OEM supplier of sprockets and brake rotors in the world. Check them out at sunstar-mc.com. Get a better grip on your ride with Grip and Ride. This segment was brought to you by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Tire warmers, bike stands, undersuits, you can find all of them at MotoDRacing.com. For protective jeans that fit your lifestyle, it's bullet jeans. There. And the 42 on behind. the outside. This is, this is what it comes down here. This is what we've been looking forward to. And Coolbeth runs up the inside as we have a rider down in the middle of turns one and two, but we stay green. 
We're going to race them to the checkered flag. One rider down in the middle of turn number one. Here's Meese, Coolbath, and Smith. They've kind of zigzagged on the back straight. Now Smith goes up the inside. Into turn number three they go. Here comes Smith. Meese shuts the door. Coolbath to the high side of the racetrack. Now Meese drifts wide. He's taking up as much racetrack as he can. Smith lighting up down there coming up before. Here they come, Chris Carr. We're going to have a three-wide uh, three deal as Smith pulls out of the draft, goes by up the inside. That looked like Brian Smith from here. A great acceleration coming off at of turn four on the last lap. That was a close one. Everybody thinks that they won, so we'll have to wait until they see. And it uh, is <laughs> going to, holy cow, I'll wait and see how they decide this one. Ladies and gentlemen, some more riders are crossing the finish line right now. You can see Baker's on the inside turn number two, but... Uh, Timing and scoring has a gap of point zero 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 at the line. How do you call that one? Uh, they might have to go to a finish line camera. As we get a replay there, Coolbeth uh, goes to the outside, but this is, about, this is as close as it gets, folks. A finish line camera may have to determine this as we slow it down coming across. Three uh, wide. Brian Smith is the rider listed on the top of the screen, and he is listed by 0 0.000 seconds. Jared Meese is scored right now with a second finish. Kenny Coolbeth is scored right now for third. Johnny Lewis is fourth. Fifth is Sammy Halbert. Sixth is Jeffrey Carver. Seventh is Jared Vandekoy. Eighth is Nicole Meese. Briar Bauman is showing ninth. Jake Shoemaker is credited with tenth. Doug Lawrence uh, did finish, but he's two laps down, and he is in the 11th spot. We're trying to figure out who the winner is. As soon as we do, one rider is going to get the victory lap. Smith is on top of the charts right now, but we're uh, not 100% sure. Uh, we'll have to figure out, figure that well, out. Just the little camera that I looked at looked like the, the 42 to me, what I saw. But I, I am not official. What I saw was uh, Brian Smith by about an inch at the line. That was a close one, folks. It doesn't get any closer. Well, it looks like there's Smith and there's Brian's mom climbing on back, and they're going to get the victory lap. So they are giving the win to Brian Smith. Of course, they're going to have to go to the finish line camera, but that's what they are going with. Smith takes the third victory of the season. That is three miles. He won Springfield. He won Sacramento. And he wins here tonight on the 42 Crosley Kawasaki. Chris? Well, I tell you, you know, this is what Brian Smith needed to do tonight. He needed to continue to win the miles. He's strong. He's been the king of the miles for the last two years. He was sixth in points coming into this race. Uh, 14, 14 points behind Jared Meese. He did what he needed to do to give himself a chance as uh, as, as I mean, this is the closest finish we've had all year, and it's amongst three riders. Uh, fantastic race. These guys did not disappoint. And uh, as we get another, another close look here on Fans Choice TV, uh, that, that's uh, barely. Man, that was close. That Smith, is so close. Smith was sitting back there in the third spot, and it looked like Cool Beth's race. And then here comes Meese, goes by, and he brings the 42 with him. And I believe that possibly might be the well, one the, of the few the laps one, that the 42 left. The one took a little slight left turn, and that kind of just set Smith up right in wheelhouse. And Smith was able to get the draft off the number one from the third position. Kind of caught the number two off guard, and he went drafting to the outside. It seems like every time you draft to the inside, you get a little bit more momentum. So uh, wow. great race. So, you know, he's the king of the miles. He, uh, he pulled that one off in the last lap after a race dominated by the number two for the most part. Absolutely. Congratulations goes to Brian Smith, Jared Meese, Kenny Coolbest scored third, Johnny Lewis is fourth, Sammy Halbert fifth, Jeffrey Carver sixth, Jared Vandekoy seventh, Nicole Meese back there in the eighth spot, the fifth, the 14 of Briar Bauman is credited for ninth, Jake Shoemaker tenth, Doug Lawrence eleventh, Brad Baker with the twelfth. A lot of, uh, a lot of wear and tear on these motorcycles because from twelfth on back did not finish the race. Brad Baker is credited with twelfth, Sean Bear thirteenth, Willie McCoy fourteenth, I'm uh, sorry, Henry Wiles fourteenth, Willie McCoy fifteenth, Brandon Robinson, Cody Johncox, and Kale Kochman. That rounds out your 18. Uh, for you fans here with us live in DeCoin, the pits will be open in just a moment after we get this victory celebration taken care of. You're more than welcome to come on down here and meet your favorite rider here in the stands. So we're going to bring Brian Smith up there on the victory podium here in just a second, but what a great race. Yeah, you know, looking at the leaderboard here, 18 riders started this race. Nine of them made it to the finish line. The magic mile for some, a bit of a nightmare combination of crashes a lot of uh, a lot of motorcycles expiring out there as we see the number 42 coming up to toward victory circle uh, congratulations to Brian Smith the 20th win of his career 
He's moving up there. He's catching you up there in the miles. <laughs> yeah, he's got a he's ways got, to he's go. Got, he's got some time. Yeah, he does. I expect he'll probably win more miles than I did. And he made history when he won gold at the X Games flat track event hosted by Harley Davidson. And he had a nail biting finish, photo finish for that matter, at the race at DeCoin over the weekend. We have on number 42, Crosley Radio Kawasaki rider, Brian Smith. Brian, welcome to the show. All right, thanks for having me, Danielle. Absolutely. So we're going to get to a few things here because obviously you're on a streak right now, a winning streak. Uh, let's start with the X Games since that was one of the biggest things for you probably uh, and you made history with your gold medal. Let's talk about the X Games. How was the experience for, for you aside from the gold medal, of course? Uh, it was great. I mean, the whole event down there uh, at the Circuit of the Americas, it's a huge, super awesome complex. ESPN did a, one a heck of a job. Obviously, it's the first time me or any other flat tracker has uh, experienced the X Games, so I was uh, super impressed just how professional uh, everything was from signing in to uh, the gift bag to the race to the gold medal, and everything was just over-the-top awesome. Now, we know at this point that um, leading up to their event, there was rain, there was flooding, the track conditions were kind of out of control even uh, for race day. But, you know, tell us uh, at the end of the day some of the details about how that went down, how they got it all together, and how as a racer you felt they did uh, as a whole. Yeah, I mean, it was nuts to even have a race. Uh, they broke like something like it was like over a 100-year record of rainfall and 10 days or seven days. And that was leading up to the flat track race basically. So, um, the track actually ended up being too dry because they couldn't get any equipment on it to, uh, work it or to water it because underneath was so wet that it would just sink in. So when we showed up on Wednesday and we, I think everybody was surprised when they seen the track that it, uh, it looked like more of a motocross mud bog. So to have what we had on Thursday to race on and actually be able to put a show on for everybody was, uh, a miracle really so i'm thankful for everybody that had a hand in helping get that track together right so it's supposed to be flat track racing track wasn't very flat at all but like you said at the end of the day they did a great job they made history you made history winning the gold um but now let's talk about the mile winning streak that you're on if anybody watched a coin over the weekend we showed a clip at the beginning of this uh that is the photo finish that had to happen you won by uh not much at all it was i think a couple hundredths of a second over the two guys behind you talk us through setting up that last lap draft pass for the win yeah it was uh more than a hundred that was like a millionth of a second I mean uh they weren't behind me they were directly beside me it was nuts uh I've never had a finish that close usually all the miles are pretty close but uh you know after 25 laps of going literally as fast as you can around a flat track you would think you'd have more breathing room than a couple inches from first to third I mean it was nuts to, uh you know, from the green flag, everybody was hammered down, and I was just kind of staying in contention and uh, knowing that I had something for him, but I really didn't want to show it till the last lap and uh, still made it tough. Jared uh, Mees and Kenny Coolbeth, they're uh, two of the best in the sport. And to beat them uh, any day is good. Uh, you know, I love the mile track, so I felt like it was my race to lose. And uh, I was just hammered down the last lap and caught just the right draft off turn four. And pulled it inside and luckily uh, just squeaked by. Right, and at the end of the race, I don't think one through th first through third even had any idea where you ended up uh, uh, when the checkered flag went off. So talk about, you, you said usually a race that that's long, like 25 miles, you take a couple laps to get comfortable, but it really was bar banging from beginning to end. There was a red flag in between where you had to restart, but I mean, it was a freight train for the first half of the race leading up to the red flag. So talk about that. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to you know maybe comprehend some people that don't know a flat tracker haven't been in the uh situation of leading a, a mile national but uh you know even though you're going 130 140 mile an hour you're kind of it's like playing chess usually it's more strategy and uh you're kind of feeling the guys out and setting setting everything up for the last five laps and more importantly the last lap and uh this mile was kind of like that it was a uh, hammer down like i said from the time the light went green so you know, it's more physically demanding, but it's also hard to comprehend uh, in your own mind what you're going to do that last lap because you never really had a chance because you're just on the ragged edge for 25 laps. Uh, and a lot of that was due to the track surface and shape there. It had multiple lines and uh, definitely put on 
one hell of a show for everybody that was there and everybody that watched it on uh, Fans Choice. Right, which we love watching on FansChoice.tv. Uh, it was the first time you guys have been back to DeCoin in quite a, quite a while, eight or nine years, and uh, had to be great for the fans that did show up and for the fans that watched that race. Now, you're on a bit of a streak with the miles right now. I mean, is, are the miles your thing uh, usually? Yeah, I've always been better on the mile. I don't know. People have been asking me a lot lately. You know, I did good. Uh, I've always done good on them, but it seems like last year and then this year, um, they've been calling me the the mile the mile man, the mile master, and they all want to know why. And uh, there's really no answer. I don't know. Um, I've always just since I was, I mean, the first time I rode a mile was like on an 80 cc bike, and it was like to me it was awesome, but it was probably like watching paint dry for my parents watching me go around the, around that thing. Uh, you know, but I've always just liked them. I always did good on them. Um, I think some of it's probably due to the fact that I'm uh, close with Scott Parker, the biggest racer of all time in flat track and miles. And uh, growing up watching him at that time on ESPN uh, win the miles, it was like, hey, I want to be like him. I guess I better figure out how to win these miles. And somehow it all fell into place. And uh, I think some of it due, is due to my riding style. I'm usually pretty smooth and uh, more, more thought out of a rider rather than uh, – you know, pinning it and holding on. So uh, I think that pays pays the part. And the other part is just, uh, you know, it just suits me well, I guess. And the Kawasaki that I got's really, really, really good on the miles. So it's just uh, two two big things working together. I'm better on the mile, and the Kawasaki's probably better on the mile, and it just clicks. Well, talk about your Kawasaki for that matter. It's the Crosley Radio Kawasaki. Tell us about your team. Uh, yeah, Crosley Radio, um, they've been behind me for the last five years, I'd say. Uh, Five, four or five years anyway, but, uh, you know, if it wasn't for them, I would not be here uh, talking to you today, that's for sure. Uh, Bo Lamassis, that owns the Crosley Company, he's uh, put a lot, for, a lot of effort into my program, and it's uh, really showed to be the dominant team the last two seasons, and uh, I can't thank him enough. And then this year, we got Kawasaki uh, stepped up and helped us out, so it's cool to, to officially do it for Kawasaki and uh, get him some exposure in the flat track world. Right. Well, there obviously something's come together for you as you've won the last three miles. You're sitting third in points right now in your respective class. We want to get you on to congratulate you not only for your win over the weekend, but also for the history that you made at the X Games. Brian, we want to get you on, introduce you to our audience, and congratulate you, and wish you the best luck for the rest of the season. And speaking of, you know, what are your goals for the rest of the season, or how do you see it playing out for yourself? Uh, just keep winning. Um, we got another mile this weekend at Indianapolis um, Saturday night, so that'll be probably another barn burner of a show down there. So anybody in the area, be sure to come out and check us out Saturday night in Indy. Um, obviously, go there and win. Um, that's what I'm supposed to do. They're telling me I'm the mile man, so I got to go there and win. Uh, we got some half mile races that I have won last year, so uh, hopefully I can win them again this year and be in that points hunt when we uh, go into the roller derby match in Vegas for the last round, the indoor short track. Awesome. Well, you narrowly missed out on a championship last year, and he's in the hunt this year, and he's almost there. He's sitting in third right now. Brian, we wanted to get you on number 42. You can follow him on Instagram at bsmith40 and the number two. Word 40, number two. Yep. Correct? Okay. Follow him on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook as well. Brian, thanks so much for coming on the show. Thanks a lot. Thanks for having me, Danielle, and uh, cheers, everyone. All right, we'll be right back after this commercial break. Protect your motorcycle from rust with the Z-Rust Cycle Volt. Pick it up at ZRustProducts.com. CoreMoto Performance Brake Lines. Check them out at CoreMoto.com. And we're back. Are you looking for a little more adventure in your life? You might be surprised where two and four wheels can take you. Today, we're looking at a little four by four side-by-side -side action in Moab, Utah. This looks fun. Big thanks to Kimco for providing this Moab footage that really makes you wish you were there. We'll be right back after this commercial break.
This is Cole. Clearly Cole has a bad attitude and a long torso. For a better attitude, Cole is going to need professional psychological help. For his long torso, professional psychological help is already here. Build brand clothing shirts specifically feature two extra inches of length, a tubular fit, and the world's most comfortable 30 singles cotton fabric. Solve a problem in your life. Buy a shirt from BuiltClothing.com and see why the details in fit and quality make our shirts superior. Chuck Walla Valley Raceway, 17 corners to challenge even the most experienced rider. Go race, CVR.com. SVRacingParts.com, the exclusive importer and distributor of the KO Mini GP MR125 race bike. That's SVRacingParts.com. Big thanks to our guests, Mark Heckles and Brian Smith. Quick reminder, September 11th through 13th, sitting on more than 500 acres in Millville, New Jersey, New Jersey Motorsports Park is the premier motorsports entertainment complex in the Northeast. If you've never made it to a race there, you're missing out. The race is always good and the fans are even better and tickets are on sale now. For more information, go to MotoAmerica.com. And for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. And for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. Nailed it. One, two. Good night. That's why they call me One City. <laughs> <laughs> the One Take Kid.